Got to wait a couple of seconds for the recording to start. And we're on here, wherever we are, up on stage here with Daniel Mettler, the founder of Too Sexy. And uh, Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful uh, talking to you uh, when uh, you agreed to do a presentation. I can't wait to uh, get to know you a little bit better, especially the way you were raised in the jungle. So um, without any further ado, I think uh, you can jump right in here and uh, I'll just uh, go back into the wings. Okay. Thanks, Kip. No worries, so, man. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. If you don't, then I don't see any picture. So you guys would just have to put something in the chat or something and, and get back to me. But otherwise, I will just get started. So I'm going to show you the first hybrid module running both on DNN and Octane. Uh, Tonchi and me, uh, we're some of the core developers here on 2Sexy. I've been working day and night for the last two weeks, and we're pretty proud of what we've achieved in the meantime. So what we're going to show you is um, basically a, a 2Sexy, which runs on multiple platforms. And it's basically the idea is that it's actually the same um, Razor code, which runs both on DNN and Octane. And I want to give you a guidance how if you have any other kind of code that you have, how you can build it in a way that your code too can survive platform changes or be prepared for any change. For example, if one day .NET Nuke would become .NET Core as well, uh, like Ash was um, suggesting. I mean, it might happen and if it would, you'd wanna be ready for it because your web forms code wouldn't run. So that's my goal for today. Uh, just a little bit of background. So. I am now 42 years old. Uh, I was a missionary kid in the jungle. Um, so I, I really grew up in the jungle, killing snakes and pigs and going fishing and surviving malaria and cholera. So Corona doesn't really scare me. <laughs> um, when I came to Switzerland, I basically had to learn German. And uh, during my school here, then I founded the company called To Sick, which means to serve, to inspire and to create. And we've been doing web solutions based on the .NET stack ever since then. Um, 2003, I kind of stumbled over DNN and thought, this is quite a good thing. Up to then, I had created my own content management system. Um, but basically, with time, we still realized DNN has a few weaknesses, uh, one of them being that you need way too many modules to create a website. And that basically ends up biting you someday when you try to update stuff. And the other thing was that DNN doesn't have a really good separation of content and layout. So if you wanna make something responsive, then the content editor just had to do way too much to make sure that the pictures would behave appropriately. So we created Too Sexy in 2012. It's now running on 10, 20, 30,000 websites, I don't know. Um, I'm still the chief architect, but of course not the only one still coding on it. And this year I started with Octane. So um, I created the bootstrap theme for it. And I also helped Sean creating the docs.octane.org, um, which is at least a great place to start with um, because it'll just give you an overview of the whole API. So, oh yeah, I'm an MVP as well. Never mind. So what is too sexy? Before we go much deeper, I just don't know if everybody even has seen Too Sexy before. So I'm just going to give you a very, very quick demo here. So this is TooSexy.org, the website itself. And the main purpose of Too Sexy is just to be able to create beautiful content like this that can be edited by, you know, people who have no clue at all. So basically, I can just go here. I can mouse over any element that I want to. Um, and you'll see, for example, here we have animations built in and all that. And that would be really difficult to do if the content editor would be modifying this stuff because we have a separation of, of these things. So let's make a quick example here. It says, this is a live website, by the way. So after I make the change, you will be able to look at it right away. So let's just say, I would like to say on DNN and Octane. I can just save that and it's been updated just immediately. And that's basically what Too Sexy is. Um, if you look at it, it's just this magic thing that takes care of everything for you. And it lets the web designer really create awesome stuff, which then 
Somebody with no technical skills can edit, just drag pictures in, do things. It's automatically cropped, resized, responsive, etc. And it just consistently separates everything. And it's not just for very simple content. You can create complex applications with it, um, build JavaScript spas on the data because it has a headless API and stuff like that. So basically, that's what 2Sexy will do for you. And so what are we going to be doing this hour? Well, I'm going to show you something. Um, then we're also going to discuss why are we doing this, some more demos. And then I'll really go a little bit into the coding questions. What must be done to make something run on multiple platforms like this? How can you prepare your work? Or how can you develop something new today on DNN, which you know will run on Octane someday in the future, or on anything else, the next DNN, which might be done at core? Because no matter what we do, especially if we develop something that is really going to cost money, so we're not talking about a two-week project, but maybe half a year project or something, you kind of want to be sure that your investment is really not lost. So basically, in the end, the question is to be or not to be. Because no matter what we're doing, we know DNN is super solid. It solves all our problems now. But we know it's not the latest tech. It's not the sexy stuff students would like to play with when they come out of universities. So what's the future going to be like? Now, basically, the question we're trying to answer is this. What if your code could run on lots of platforms? So I'm still talking just .NET. But what if the same code, let's say you made a solution, for example, to manage quotes, a system where sales requests came in and you would process them. You would send quotes out. You would uh, monitor the leads, et cetera. This is a business application. And maybe one of your customers had needs that you could better solve with DNN. Another one had something you could better solve with, with Octane or even Note Commerce. And you'd like to get that to fly. So basically, if you have a solution which is architected in a way that it doesn't really matter which platform it runs on, you're going to be future-proofing your work and just making sure that whatever you're doing is not going to be lost. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And that This is like, what if your code would do this? But what if too sexy ran everywhere? Because basically, that would mean that Octane, which is not a CMS, would immediately become a CMS. It also means that all these platforms that could run too sexy would have like a really easy, low-code, quick-to-market system. Because 2Sexy is all about rapid prototyping, quickly creating something, checking it with a customer, getting some feedback, making some adaptions. It's really efficient to get something out there. And what if that would just run on all these platforms? And if your employees, where you have to manage the skills and basically always weigh the training time with, like, should they really learn something new? Should they stay on something they've known? This would let them build something on Nope Commerce or Octane, even though they've never used it before, simply because they've used Too Sexy on DNN. And basically, what it also gives is automatically you would have, at least if we get these apps to be hybrid, you'll see that in a moment, a solution where let's say Too Sexy can run on Octane. Well, Octane would immediately have like 30 really cool professional grade apps, whether it's FAQ, news blog posts, whether it's uh, really nice swiper um, animations, whether it's good tiles, which are responsive, all these things would just be there because one platform was running on it. And that would mean that content apps and your own stuff, if you would be building something on Too Sexy from yourself, would just run. This includes JavaScript apps, like we, we run a lot of Angular apps in Too Sexy, and they would just run on Octane. Think about that. So now I'm going to finally show you the first hybrid running on DNN on Octane. And so I would just like to show you a very simple example. This is, let me just refresh it so you can see that it's running. And by the way, the server's probably just kicking it off again. This is a token template. That's the most basic kind of a, let's say, system out there in DNN. Um, if you've never seen it, this would be the source code for it. It just has placeholders like this. Item title, item toolbar, and a link. And that's what you see here. 
And because it has a toolbar, I could just go in here and edit something and start working with that. Um, and I could also make small changes here, like hello there, and just uh, refresh up. Oh, it just got up. Refresh the page. It says hello there. Um, so this is just a simple template. But now I would like to, on a brand new page, just add this module. So I'm going to say I'm going to add an app. This is going to be a swiper. And just like you've seen it in, in, in DNN, this all takes a moment because it's just been booting again from my system. Um, I would now choose which app I'd like to show here. It's a swiper. So these are apps we've already made previously on DNN, and we're just making them available on Octane right now because the engine is now also running on Octane. So this is a swiper. And let's just go in there, and this was the, just the demo slides that you're seeing here. And let's make a DNN global swiper. And let's say I'd like to have a cool effect, like a cube effect. So I just edited data into Sexy just like I did in DNN. And this is already running on Octane. Let me add a slide to this. So basically, for adding a slide, let me just uh, grab a picture that I've prepared. This is for today's session. I can just drop it here. Oh, I'm not sure if I did that quite right. There we go. I can just save it. And now I'm already editing data, drag dropping images and everything on Octane, just like I would have on DNN. I have awesome, cool JavaScript animations. Let's add another slide. Let's make this one red. Oop. Let's give it a nice description. News. And let's even give it a call to action button. I'm going to skip the link here, but call me now. Save that. Now we have a nice slider cube effect in Octane with call to action effects. And I can just go in here and say, okay, I don't like that effect. Maybe I'd prefer a parallax or something. And don't forget, 2Sex is just the engine that manages the data and that lets you create templates with HTML output. So in other words, this JavaScript stuff and all that, that's stuff you can just get from the web. And we've just kind of prepackaged it with this data stuff. But this is all super simple. And what I'd also like to just point out is if I go back to edit, you'll notice that even here, the files, just like in DNN, are using number reference. So we've really already done a whole lot just to get it to be really the Octane way. So what you just saw is all this stuff, but now in Octane. And it uses an existing Too Sexy app, which we had already built previously for DNN. And now it just runs on Octane. So that's why I'm saying, basically, if you add this to Octane, Octane is a CMS already, just thanks to this one single plugin. So let's keep going. I'm just quickly checking if there are some questions here, but nothing. Oh, there are some. Just let me check if anything is relevant to me or if people are just exchanging beer tips. Um, I get a tip here that the screen resolution is too high. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Or I'll just hope so. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll just uh, continue there. But if, if I see some more complaints, I'll try to adjust that. It might be a bit difficult to do that in real time. So here's the vision, actually. Our vision is that Too Sexy becomes the Xamarin of web CMSs. So with Xamarin or PhoneGap, you have one solution that you use to create something cool and it'll run on different platforms. Well, with 2Sex, you are gonna achieve the same thing. You're gonna be able to create apps, content stuff, blogs, whatever you want to your heart's content, which runs on DNN and Octane as the first proof of concept now. But we're then going to extend it that it's also gonna run on Nope Commerce or whatever cool other platform comes out. Because Nope Commerce is a typical example which is really lacking in content management systems as well. Um, so I'd like to give you a simple insight of what this means in terms of code. So you already briefly saw what happened when I wrote in something in um, the, the, the token uh, template. 
Let me give you a short example of here. Let me zoom in a little bit in case that you guys might not actually see the fonts as well. Okay, so this is the, the razor code. You can see here it's a bunch of divs showing all these swiper classes, the slides and everything. And so this is basically what powers this page here. And it's razor, that means I can make changes like adding a title here. This is just gonna pick up the title that I wrote in there and put it in H1. Now it's gonna be a bit slow right now because I'm running it from my Visual Studio. So it's going to recompile the whole of Octane right now while I'm doing this, but it still should be fairly quick. But that's why the screen freezes right now. Um, if I were not doing this in kind of a developer mode, this would not happen. It would just be back in a second, but we're still working on it. Okay, so it's gonna reload. Now I should be seeing Visual Studio doing some heavy lifting in the background. And here it comes back. And we should very soon see the title above the swiper once everything has warmed up again. Yeah, and this live editing capability is something that, I mean, this was not live, of course, but like in if I were working in DNN here, I could just go into the website right away, quickly go in and make some changes to the templates here in the back end, and within a second or two, it would be updated. And that's really, really efficient compared to restarting your application after every single change just to make tests. So let's go back to the presentation. Oh, and one more thing I'd like to show you, which also already works, is um, we've already implemented insights. That means into Sexy, there's a really awesome backend feature where I can actually look at everything that happens internally. So here is a protocol of what Too Sexy did just to render this component, like what data it initialized, which steps it went through, which data sources it had to access and everything. And this makes debugging phenomenal because if you have complex queries doing stuff and something surprising happens, you can just click in here, look what happened, and it'll even tell you which line of code something failed on. So, and then how long it took, by the way. So you see this request here. Um, oh, timers are not turned on yet in Octane. We'll have to do that later on. Okay. So what you just saw is the world's first hybrid module running on DNN and Octane. And next I'd like to show you how this is actually possible because we're talking about a code base of around 400,000 lines of code, which is running on two completely different platforms. Something that is really hard to do if you don't start right. So here's like an overview, okay? So the, the main recipe is you have to work with the latest common framework. Since we started this five years ago, we, had, we were using .NET Standard 1.6. If you start today, then you can use .NET Standard 2.0. Now. You might not know a bunch about this. You might have heard about .NET Framework and about .NET Core. Well, .NET Standard is like, it's something like a middle ground, which says if you're running on .NET Standard 2, then the very same code will run on .NET Core, this and this version, and .NET Framework, another version. And if you're gonna start now with DNN 9, 7, 9, 8, you can use .NET Standard 2. The next important step is that you need to use Razor simply because web controls will never run on another platform. And of course, what you also need to do is decouple all of your important code from the native platform so you can maximize your code reuse. On the client side, you're gonna have to focus on JavaScript. So this is not the Blazor philosophy, of course, but this is a cross-platform philosophy. If you use JavaScript, then you can easily make a backend on any platform work. Um, but of course, remember, we're still generating HTML. That was just using Razor. Um, what we also need to do, of course, is um, use web APIs. That's not gonna be a big surprise to anybody here. Um, and we have to drop any old cool things like postbacks. So that was a very .NET uh, framework kind of a thing. 
Let me quickly check if there are any um, things that is coming. Okay, so, so far, uh, nobody's complaining yet. By the way, you can just ask questions. I'll keep on looking back into the chat every two or three minutes. Today, I'm going to focus on the server side because this is not a JavaScript session. Um, and this is the journey we went through, okay? We started um, as a DNN module in 2012. And that was already when .NET Core was coming out. So it was very clear that this is not going to be a future-proof solution. Then we switched over to using Razor. The very first versions were using tokens and stuff in 2014. And in 2015, five years ago, we started to re-architect our solution to be .NET Core capable. We actually used .NET Core code in 2015 running on DNN. This has been possible for forever. And in my personal opinion, this is still in the times of the DNN Corp. Since this has been possible for over five years, they should have looked at this much, much earlier. I kept on pushing this at the DNN conferences, but everybody was, I guess, too busy. Never mind. So today, Too Sexy is already running on Octane. Um, in the UI development, though, that's the green bar at the bottom. We started with uh, server-side code in 2012. We switched to Angular JS in 2014. And it had gotten a very, very rich UI. So it took us over two years to get that to run on Angular 10. But now, since about three months, the entire UI is just TypeScript and Angular 10. So all those things you saw pop up. You'll see mo way more in a moment. That was just the simple editing interface, drag and drop and stuff. Let's talk about decoupling the code because this is actually like the first and foremost essential tiny bit that you just have to do. Otherwise, no chance. We have to detach our core code and I'm gonna show you some examples in a moment from the DNN implementation. And for that, you need to use dependency injection. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen dependency injection. I'll explain it a little more in a moment, but just so you know, DNN 9.7, I believe, finally introduced the .NET standard 2.0 dependency injection. So actually, now, finally, it's actually part of DNN. Could have been five years ago, but it is now. So do look at it, use it, because it'll make your future safer. Then we're going to split the Visual Studio projects. I'm going to show some code afterwards into the core layers, which should have no connections to DNN whatsoever and the integration layer, which will be a .NET fr a framework for solution. But that's just gonna be a very tiny bit of code. Of our probably about 150,000 lines of server code, I would say maybe 5,000 are DNN. And we're probably gonna write another 5,000 lines of Octane code, but the other 140,000 lines of code are reusable. Then we're gonna talk about framework dependencies. I've prepared that as well, and how to handle third-party dependencies. So let's look at dependency injection. And I'm just gonna give you a very practical example because it's easier to explain with code. Here is a piece of code that is a client dependency optimizer. And this piece of code in DNN is responsible for taking the HTML we just made picking out the script tags and link tags, CSS and stuff, and telling DNN to load this in a certain order just so that the page speeds up. Like some JavaScripts, you'd like them at the bottom of the page so it's much more performant. And so this is what this does. Now, if this were just programmed into the system, then another solution like Octane would have a problem because the needs are very different. This was one of the big problems we ran into just uh, migrating to Octane. So basically there's a DNN version of this and there's an Octane version of this. And in the background, there's a list which says which one is to be used on which platform. It's actually pretty simple, but I just don't wanna go much deeper into it right now. But there's just, when the application starts, it gets a list. These are the dependencies you should use. So DNN will automatically use this one, which will just extract things and use priorities. Octane doesn't know priorities, but it needs a very different kind of extraction. So it's this one. And in our case, 
we even went in there and in Octane, we made it way smarter because in DNN, we're just extracting the external links. In Octane, we're even extracting the inline JavaScript and passing it to Blazor because Blazor behaves very differently so that the inline scripts will work too. This helps us to make templates which are the same in DNN and Octane. Just in one case, we have to work a little more, but dependency injection kind of is the piece that chooses which thing is gonna do the work. So if we look at this, see we have these three different kinds. Uh, we have a base class, we have two other ones, and we tell with dependency injection, which one is to be used. So Octane needs a bit more work and does more, but the rest of the application doesn't need to know this. And this is how we can reuse 98% of our code and just customize those few little bits that are different in each platform. Hope that made sense. If there are any questions, I would answer them now, but I think it's pretty quiet in the chat. So I'll just continue. The next step is that we need to split the Visual Studio projects. That means we have to create sub projects which just have clean code, which is cross-platform, .NET standard, whatever. And we have the integration layers. Here you can see the project tree that we have. So the EAV system, for example, is everything that does all the data handling, the caching, the um, connecting queries and all that kind of magic stuff in the background. Then the too sexy layer is the content management layer. And then DNN has these projects for web API and front end. And again, the DNN part is at most 5,000 lines of code. Um, I would like to show you the little example here, just so you know about multi-targeting, because in some cases we will need to have the same application or the same solution compiling for different targets. That happens here. So basically in Visual Studio, I can say on certain projects that I need two DLLs to be made, one for .NET Framework and one for .NET Standard. We try to avoid this as much as possible, but it's not always possible. So for example, there's one little bit of code here, which is responsible for giving us a server path. And in .NET Core, it uses a different mechanism to do it. So we have these compiler statements. And this basically means if I'm running this in .NET Standard, it's gonna include this code. If I'm running it in .NET 451, it's gonna actually compile this code. So the two DLLs will not be the same. Avoid this as much as possible, but it's not a big deal. So try to avoid them if possible, minimize them, but just takes a bit of time. And if you have the projects well split, you will almost never need to do this. So we probably have like 20 cases of this in our 140, 50,000 lines of code. Okay, so far so good. Now we have the question of framework dependencies. That means, let's say entity framework. Entity framework is being used. So we included entity framework 1.1.NET Core in 2014, 15. And that's the one DNN is using because it's .NET Core, but it runs on DNN, no problem. For Octane, which is much newer, we needed a different entity framework. The awesome thing was, I think we had to put two compiler conditions in it and that's it. But you still need to make sure this works. So let me just quickly show you how this is done in the project. So this is the persistence layer. And you can see here, this is the project file, again, which has a dual target frameworks. And in here, it's once you see it, it's, it's very simple, but basically we specified that when it's compiling it for .NET 451, it's gonna use these old libraries. And down here, you can see if it's running on .NET standard 2.0, it's gonna use the latest libraries. And this is pretty simple to do. Um, I think the important thing you must know is you sometimes need to manually edit these CS project files. So it's not quite as simple as just going into NuGet and picking up what you need. You need to do this yourself and it can be a bit bumpy because you have to like Google the right versions that you're going to use. But still, 
after a few hours, everything works. So it's not magic. If you have your own code doing something similar, you usually have like maybe 10 of these external dependencies. And the more you split your projects, the less you have to worry about this. So what's next is third-party dependencies. It's a similar setup. So because DNN has been using Newton soft for forever and Octane uses it too, we have two different versions of the JSON parser. You'll run into similar problems yourself, zipping, um, or uh, we also have a CSV library, which is very popular. And so I'd like to show you quickly how this is done because it's really the same mechanism. Here, this is the import export project onto Sexy. Let me see if I can zoom a little more. We have a target framework 451. And in this case, we're even just going to reference this as a DLL, which we just stored into our repo just to make sure that everybody can compile it. And Newton Soft, uh, Newton Soft is being picked up from NuGet in a very, very old version. At the same time, when we're compiling for the newer stuff, we have these two NuGet packages and everything works. So you see, this is all fairly simple Takes a bit of time, a bit of planning, but this way, just make sure your code does this stuff and you can prepare for .NET Core in, well, 5% of the time it took you to create your original solution. And it's much easier than a complete, complete rewrite. Um, you also need to do manual editing. And sometimes you will need some older DLLs to reference directly. And in that case, I really recommend that you um, include that in your source code because otherwise you might <laughs> have trouble compiling it a half a year down the road. Okay, so far so good. Let me check the time, 20 minutes left. In some rare cases, you have parts of your application which are so different that just a bit of branching isn't gonna cut it. In that case, what you wanna do is create two different projects. And in DNN, we're gonna reference one of these and in the .NET standard or Octane version, we're gonna reference the other one. You can also see there, there's a new project down here coming up, which is uh, gonna be this hybrid. That's gonna be the one that's gonna work on all platforms. And that's gonna make life so much easier. Okay, let's look at the next step. So we've gotten pretty far. I'd like to give you two or three last insights of stuff that is working and then tell you a little bit about what we went through because we suffered and we did, we, we had, uh, we, we were burning the midnight oil quite a bit, don't you and me? Um, but it was fun and there was a lot of passion in it. So it, it was absolutely worth it. So let me just show you two or three more things just so you really get a feeling for how far we've actually come. This is the whole admin backend of Too Sexy. And you can see we have all this data management uh, features. We have all this, we can really work with all of this stuff already. There's data versioning built in. I can look at previous versions. I can get REST APIs. I can do stuff with this. Uh, we have the visual queries, which I don't have a demo for yet. We have the view management. We can, so all this is already working. And this was two weeks of integration work of two people. So let's make that one month for an application which has 150,000 lines of server code and 250,000 lines of JavaScript code. This whole front end is JavaScript. So if you would watch what's happening on the network, just for those who are a little bit more curious, if I click anywhere here, you will see web API calls getting data getting lists. If I edit something, it's also going to make calls here. It's going to save stuff here. This is all web API running on Octane slash Blazor. And this just works. So 15 minutes left. This is our journey to Octane. So I'd just like to give, be very upfront with things we ran into, things we liked, things we didn't like, things we just had challenges with. And a very important thing to notice is Octane looks very lightweight and it is. 
That also means that it's still very young and there's a lot of things you would miss in an API, um, which you can easily code yourself because it's very easy to understand the code, but it does make a lot of things that you think are super fast, oh, gonna be two or three hours just because you have to figure them out first. For example, there were some APIs to um, get files into Octane, but we still had to do the whole save routine and put in the database in our own code. Uh, there's deleting and there's up uh, adding, but there is no rename, which causes a lot of problems because of the way the data is structured. The file manager, for example, is also very, very simple. And I had to upload about seven files in the Octane file manager, and it took me 10 minutes and I made three mistakes. So that just means it's important to know this is the latest and greatest tech. It's still very young, but that just means if you start with it, it's certainly first and foremost targeted to people who enjoy technology and don't mind a few bumps in the road. Um, then what's also important is that even though things look very similar and it's tempting to think they're almost the same, there are quite a few surprises down the road. One of the funny things we ran into was that in BNN, if I have a file, it's in portals slash zero slash whatever icon.jpg. So Too Sexy had a mechanism to get us this path. In Octane, the path where it's on the server is different from the path that you need in the browser because the browser has a kind of a download API, which is a completely different link. So we had to actually change the internals of Too Sexy to have two kinds of paths now, one for server handling and one for client handling. So even though everything looks very similar, there are still clear differences. Now, if you will be using Too Sexy on Octane, you're not gonna feel this because we already worked on all of this. But if you're the, going to just start up with this, it's important that you know it's, it, there are a few bumps in the road. It will take some time and you should plan for that. But if you love technology and you don't mind a few midnight sessions, then this is your place. There are also some things about namespaces, but I won't go into it too much just for timing reasons. And what's also important is that since Octane is so young, it's still going to be growing. And growing also means there will be minor breaking changes. Um, the, I made a theme for Octane five months ago it still compiles, it still runs, but because of some changes, which were good, I'm gonna to have to rework some of the parts. And the documentations, by the way, um, I was in charge of those, docs.octane.org. Go ahead, look at them. It's a great starting point to just get a feeling for what the infrastructure and the API is like. So what about, um, Blazor itself. Well, Blazor is also very young. Despite being in work since 2018, we have to say it's only been released to manufacturing half a year ago, and there are still some very funky things that happen in there. Um, one of the craziest parts that we ran into is the entire thing with JavaScript in Blazor does cause some challenges. Uh, we believe we've solved all of them, but if you do like JavaScript, and I personally really, really like JavaScript, then you will have some hiccups until everything flows well. Then also important, dependency injection is much stricter than it was before. Ran into some problems there. And if you're going to, like us, do runtime compiling of C-sharp files and um, CS HTML, that's one of the core features also of, of Too Sexy. Well, it's gonna cost you some time. I believe most of you won't be doing that, but that was really tough for us. So what else do I wanna say? I wanna explain a little bit what the future is for Too Sexy. I hope I gave you enough insights for you, A, to be inspired to do something like this yourself, just to prepare for whatever comes next, and B, that you have kind of an idea of the roadmap. So for Too Sexy, the next steps are basically this. We're gonna finish the runtime compiling. There are still some parts we haven't done yet. I really wanna spend a few hours with Sean just to make sure that we're storing the files in the places they're supposed to be because since everything is so different, it's not always clear. And of course, 
we want to make a rock solid solution. So we're really going to spend some more time on the security checks before we release Too Sexy for Octane. Basically, we're going to wait another few weeks. I think in about two weeks, uh, Donut 5 should be out. Then also finish the installer and SQL automation, import, export of apps. Still missing at the moment. And then we're going to start. Um, yeah, so basically, Too Sexy for Octane should be out by Christmas, meaning there will be a new .NET Core Blazor-based content management system out there. And the next steps then for us is to make sure that we're going to um, enable hybrid apps so that everything we create for DNN will automatically also run on DNN. We need to work out some more standards there because, for example, right now in a Razor file in DNN, you would do navigate whatever and call a DNN function to create the link. And we're going to have to work on that. Then we're going to update the content templates to use this. So probably by January, we'll have a full set of content templates, picture right, picture left, responsive, three pictures, tiles, call to action buttons, everything out there. And also within quarter one, update the other popular apps like the news, blog, swiper, et cetera. Then in terms of third party extensions, I guess the biggest challenge we're going to have is the automatic image resizing. Um, we already know where we're going to go there because there's a very awesome library in, uh, out called ImageFlow, which should take care of everything. We're going to also evaluate just one more and discuss this with Sean because, of course, it would be great if automatic image resizing were just standardized across the platform. Yes, so that's kind of our work there. And basically, for us, the question is always to be or not to be relevant. And we believe that what we're doing here is essential for our vision. And to be honest, it's also our safety net. We've been on DNN for 17 years now. And for over five years, we've seen that there it doesn't fit the roadmap of Microsoft anymore. We love DNN. We're going to continue working with DNN. We're certainly still going to have DNN websites running on our servers for the next five to 10 years. But if DNN does not move to .NET Core, which is a very likely scenario, then someday we're going to have to start making new solutions on another platform without completely retraining all our employees. In terms of Octane and Blazor, it's fun, it's exciting, it's cool, but I want to emphasize it is a version one. And that does mean it will take more time and there will be more changes the next 24 months in Octane and Blazor than in DNN the last three years. And that's just important to know. If you love this stuff, it's for you. If you have a job which counts the hours, it's probably better to wait just a little bit longer. And either way, I personally believe that we have to push DNN to continue to become .NET Core. Maybe Octane is the DNN.NET Core. Maybe the Corp is going to do that, to be honest, I don't think so. Um, but either way, whether your application is going to be running on the next DNN or on Octane or on NopeCommerce tomorrow, I suggest that you prepare for it. Because basically preparing for .NET Core is just preparing for whatever comes next. Now, I have a few minutes left, but we're almost at the end. Basically, I'd like to ask for anybody that enjoys technology, enjoys programming, enjoys playing with the new stuff, please come forward, contact me, or don't you? Um, because we'd really love it if we could have some help here. And this is really the fun and great and new stuff. Uh, a lot of opportunities to learn stuff, to, to really contribute something valuable, because I think this is going to be used by ten, tens of thousands of people, just like Too Sexy is. And we'd love it if you'd participate. So that was it. Yep. And don't forget to commit. And remember, even though Octane is not a web CMS, basically, if you add too sexy, it will be. So this is me. Thank you. You guys can now ask some questions directly because that was everything I was going to show. Right on. Well, I'll tell you, I. I know a smart man when I meet him. I remember when we met <laughs> in France and I was like, wait a second, 
this guy's almost talking like a parallel universe with .NET Nuke because you've got that powerful engine under the hood. It's just a matter of, you know, what kind of steering wheel do you want? What kind of tires do you want? What, what do you want it to look like? How do you want it to behave? How do you work the controls? All those things, uh, if they can be simplified and, and made easier, are certainly going to lead to a, a, you know, a bigger adoption rate. So people don't want complicated. They don't have to overthink things, right? Yep. So, and one of the first things that I noticed about your stuff was that I didn't have to sit there for five seconds and wait for a page to refresh every time I made an edit, right? Some of the sites that we edit, I mean, you know, you've got to go in and change a couple hundred pages of content. You don't, you know, every second matters, right? Yes. So I always say hats off. You save me six seconds for every task I have to do, then you put several hundred dollars uh, of value into into my uh, into my into my work, saving me time and money and effort and frustration. You know, yeah. I work from home, so my first priority is my family. So when I sit down, I've got you know maybe ten minutes to knock out a task, right? If there's something that can help me knock that out in five minutes, then I might get twice as much done in those uh, short bursts of time that I have to uh, to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's nothing more frustrating than clicking and waiting and clicking and waiting and clicking and waiting and clicking and waiting. And yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, I, you know, my favorite saying is, "I'm going to throw this laptop into the lake." <laughs> And it's not the laptop's fault usually, it's the infrastructure that it's uh, you know, sitting on. So so you're, you're uh, again, man, you went full bore with DNN and Too Sexy. Can you, uh, I don't see too many questions being fired out here. Can you, can you tell me for maybe a couple of minutes, uh, it's my understanding that your a Too Sexy brand was a little bit too sexy for a particular client in uh, Rome. Are you at liberty to be able to elaborate a little bit how you had to make a slight, did you have to make a slight brand adjustment? <laughs> That's actually true. Um, I don't know where you picked it up, but it is true because uh, oh, I hear we, that. Were, we were in a lucky position to create the first website for the Vatican Bank. They actually didn't have a website until like four years ago. And uh, of course we created it with Too Sexy. <laughs> and then at some point, suddenly this uh, didn't appear to be appropriate anymore. And uh, they helped pay for a rebranding. <laughs> 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 so that's when we shortened it. And now it's just structured content. Yeah, understood. Understood. <laughs> I thought when I heard that, I just roared. Because I remember when uh, you first broke out with the brand, I was like, who is this guy, man? Every time I think of your company of course i've got a song in my head right and you know exactly. what song that is right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, there's a lot of great stories of how uh, brands have evolved over the years that's for sure and i think that one that one might top it i don't know <laughs> pretty neat so fantastic yeah. well thank you again daniel um we can adjourn now um for anybody, I think this is our last session today, but uh, at the top of the hour, the uh, the act bar is going to open up and uh, you're more than welcome to uh, Palavar in there. And uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to head to the, uh, the liquor store and uh, maybe have a drink with y'all. So I think that might be nice. Cool. Scott Wilkerson says, thanks very much. Or uh, that was awesome to see Daniel. Great. So it's really good. And again, these technologies are so closely entwined because I don't know. That's Sean Walker knows how to create these uh, scenarios where it's pretty irresistible, man. Clean code and uh, and the uh, charisma that's necessary, right, to be to to show leadership. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, I'll be following you and following Sean. Uh, as you guys move forward through the uh, advancing and, and new technologies. Cool. And anybody that's watching again, please get involved. This is the fun new stuff. It's the midnight oil kind of stuff. It's not the working stuff that you're doing all day long. I know you probably all have wives and kids, but, you know, spare a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, we'll stop our broadcast there for today, folks. And uh, again, feel free to move to the uh, to the sessions. That's where the 
Um, that's where the uh, the Akbar is. If you guys wanna wanna jump in, oh, Ben Sharp says or husbands. Yeah, that's right. So um, tomorrow morning we're gonna be rolling out some training sessions. So uh, tickets are still available, and uh, would love to uh, see you guys come out learn learn some things. Um, and uh, I think we're starting starting relatively early, about ten o'clock or so Eastern time, I believe. But check the schedule and. Uh, I hope we'll uh, see you this evening. Uh, again, feel free to go into networking anytime. It's always interesting. Whenever you corner somebody or get cornered by somebody, uh, the great thing about this is they've got three minutes and and, and they vanish. So you know, don't <laughs> worry about somebody uh, captivating your, your time for too, too long. So love the speed networking feature in Hopin. And uh, again, anybody that you make contact with that you'd like to... Uh, do kind of a business swap, uh, business card swap. Um, at the end of the event, when you when you log in, you'll see that you actually will have a Rolodex uh, from this event. So you'll be able to follow up. Um, also, I'd like to remind everybody, the stage record, all the stage sessions are recorded. So uh, there's a ticket that's uh, available if you'd like to have copies of those. Um, you may see the value in having, uh, you know, 20 or 30 hours of uh, dynamic content around a very dynamic platform, uh, .NET Nuke. So, Mark, you want to pop on here? And uh, and we'll I don't know if you can or not. I know he was on the road a minute ago. So. Okay, so yeah. I'm also going to go grab a beer, by the way, and looking forward to chatting with you guys later on in this uh, networking zone here. So I guess we just go there, and then we all do video chat, something like that. Yeah, it's Basically, it's a non-centralized uh, environment, so there's no leadership there in the uh, act bar. You can go in, and if the rooms get too crowded, um, I may have provisioned a method where you can create your own session. So uh, sometimes it's been a little bit interesting at concerts that I've been running. You know, I have a big crowd of people, and a couple of folks will be into uh, in the bar, and uh, next thing I know, they're gone, and there's a new session. Um, so if you do see extra sessions open up, you may want to knock on the door. Um, I don't knock on those doors because those are private, uh, things taking place, but feel free to, uh, to beat up the software. I'll double check and make sure that you can create your own session. So if people do want to splinter off into, uh, smaller groups, uh, outside the bar and the noise that can happen there, then, uh, then, uh, uh they can do that. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so. So what are you trying to say, Giff? There's a party in your room? <laughs> Could be. There's all, this is, yeah. well, it's the Akbar, so you know what that's like, right? I do. <laughs> yes, you sure do, don't you? I do. <laughs> As do many others too. I have a, most of the conferences I go to, I'm like, you know, it's five o'clock in the morning. I don't understand where these people are. <laughs> or more like, <laughs> I understand where these people are. Where did everybody go? Right. So that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, this is one of those conferences where I think I have to make the morning session. So I'll be a good boy today and uh, tonight. And uh, here's the thing you forgot about these virtual sessions, GIF, is that you can roll out of bed and on the way to your desk, stop at the shower for five minutes. You don't have to, you know, you, 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 we won't talk about the pants that you are wearing right um or, or not yeah. uh, or, or not right so, <laughs> I, so it's I a little easier it. to get here <laughs> it costs my money to to your room it's only 10 feet you know <laughs> we don't have to try and get back from a hotel or from a uh music hall or something oh man the str the stress of when an event ends and everybody's flying home taking airplanes and cars that was the worst part uh, when we put on the conference here in Nova Scotia was just, I did not want to be associated with a tragedy uh, having put on an event. So lots of stress technology wise, but far less stress logistical uh, and everybody getting here safely and home safely. So, and uh, yeah, I thought about just uh, wearing a shirt tie, you know, vest and a blazer and then every once in a while, uh, stand up and walk away and uh, not have any pants on. I thought that might get a few laughs, but uh, <laughs> tomorrow. my mind, my mind, there's always more. Kilt. 
<laughs> I just thought it would be interesting, you know, because everybody's seen from here to here, right? So, no, I'm not wearing pajamas, but uh, I very well could be. And nobody would be the wiser. So, um, go out and hit the expo booths uh, too. There's uh, there may be people manning those booths, and maybe not. Our two uh, prime sponsors um, are are able to do that. So, um, you may or may not talk to somebody but we've got some videos that can spin up there and uh so check out our sponsors they were they were helpful and uh and uh with the hundreds of hours that have gone into this uh i really appreciate that so the bar should be opening up here soon all right gentlemen well i'm gonna sign off here on the stage and uh we'll see uh see yep, how I'll you grab here uh, see you in three all right good thing cheers bye for now Cheers.